I am Amy Hale. I'm reporting from the Seattle Green Festival 2009 here on this lovely sunny day in Seattle. And I'm so fortunate to be standing here with Kevin Danaher, the founder of Green Festival. Hi, Kevin. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. So can you tell me a little bit about when you started this and uh, sort of the journey that you've, you've taken? Sure. Yeah, we started eight years ago. We had done a lot of work on corporate accountability, World Bank, International Monetary Fund, what was wrong. And we started to realize, wait, we need to create the next economy. And it's going to be the green economy because as, as the resources of the earth, as the natural resource base gets depleted, the value, the profitability, if you will, of saving resources goes up. So the right wing in the United States took the word liberal and made it negative. We're going to take the word conservative and make it positive. We're the conservatives. We want to conserve things. There are people in Washington who call themselves conservatives. They don't believe in conserving anything. They believe cut it all down. So Mother Nature is rising up all around the world. We're getting all these signals. You have to go in a different direction, people. It's not sustainable. We've already overshot the carrying capacity of this planet. For the current population, it's going to go up another 3 billion. We've got to find a way to not have 30,000 children a day dying from the effects of hunger. In a world of abundant food, but distributed so unevenly that some societies, children die at an early age and don't have a chance, that we would be appalled if it were our children. Well, those children are our children. All the children on the planet are my children. It's not just my two daughters in my house that I write checks for. It's all the children of the world. Once people feel that really deeply, then this kind of event, bringing people together in harmony, it gets a lot easier. Absolutely. So what have you seen in terms of the growth from the first festival that you had to now? Well, we started out actually uh, pulling about 14,000 people. Uh, that was in San Francisco. We did two years in San Francisco before we started Washington, D.C. And it usually goes up about 5,000 people a year. So we're up in the 35 to $45,000 dollar. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> uh, actually, we'd be out of business if it was those low amounts. Um, and that's the trick, is the financial part. These buildings are so expensive. You need a very large place. And these places are so expensive. And once you sign the contract to rent the facility, there's a whole bunch of little piranha kind of <laughs> operations that can take a bite out of you for $5,000, $10,000, and you're in cement up to here with that contract on the main venue. So there's a lot of, you know, obstacles you have to deal with, but when you create a platform that's a professionally produced platform, all of these green economy sectors exist, and they're vibrant. You bring them together, oh, this tree is getting out. And people have a good time. They learn about our relationship to nature and our relationship to each other. And it's just a beautiful event, and we get, I don't get paid, but, you know, a bunch of us get paid to do this kind of work. That's the thing I'm proud of, actually, now that I mention it, eight years of this event, and as an executive producer, I've never taken one penny in pay for all my work on it. But that's a statement about what we believe in, that economics and enterprise isn't about get rich in terms of just dollars, it's about get rich here in terms of love and caring. So that's part of this struggle is how do we redefine love from that little Hollywood two people island of happiness in the sea of misery, Ingmar Bergman. No, no, <laughs> not that version of love, big love, everybody. The love that Jesus and Dr. King and Gandhi and all the great spiritual leaders talked about the same thing, unconditional love. Know them, just us. Just us, just us, justice, just us. If you say just us, if you have a philosophy of just us, it leads to justice because there's no them. Nobody gets left out of the boat. We're all brothers and sisters. And that's what's happening in this event. It's tearful. You know, it really gets to me. So what would you say to the person that says, you know, I watched Inconvenient Truth, but it was just so depressing, and I, I just don't know what to do, and there's nothing that can be done, and I'll be dead anyway. So what would you say to that person? Well, your children and your grandchildren and my children and grandchildren aren't going to be dead. And I think we were put here for a purpose, and I don't think it was a commerce. I think it was love. I think love is the binding force of the universe. The biologists now are telling us that we were miseducated about the cell, the basic form of life. We were told the brain of the cell was the nucleus. It's not. It's the membrane. Because the membrane is what links it to other cells. We're multi-cell organisms. So it's the electrochemical transfers and binding. So what's important with us is not you or me. It's our relationship. Do we walk away from this and I go, oh, she's a jerk, or, you know, you go, I hope oh, not. Or, uh, you know, <laughs> and I know that's not true. As opposed to, you know, we say, that's nice. I hope we get a chance to work together again. And then we start to link people 
like we do in this event. We have nonprofits, for profits, musicians, speakers, kids, kids zone, bring it all together in the same place. Technology. Technology. We want to take this model up to a real estate model. It's nice to do it as an event, but there needs to be a permanent thing like this in every city in the country. Where's the green economy center of San Francisco, Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, Eugene, Portland, Seattle? doesn't exist. Why isn't there a green economy center? Duh. So Kevin, what can I do? I'm just one person. What can I do to help make a difference in this world? Well, I think you get to think about different roles you play, right? You're a resident, so around your home. You're a worker, so in your office. Maybe you're going to school, so fellow students and professors. You're a voter. You're a citizen. You're not just a consumer. You do that an hour a day, half an hour a day. You're a citizen, 365 from the moment you're born to the moment you die, you're a citizen. We have to understand that the government is our property. Government works for us. The public airwaves, it's our property. Right? We're the landlord. The corporations are tenants and they don't pay us any rent. They control the media airwaves and market our brains and our values to the corporations because that's what pays for corporate media, right, is the advertising. So they're paying to get access into your brain, my brain, my children's brains. I don't think that's a good use of the public airwaves. Uh, I think public property, it's like if we tried to take over a public park like Central Park and make one corporation own it and charge admission. I don't think people in New York could stand for that. I'm from New Jersey, you know. We wouldn't stand for that crap. So what we see going on is the first ever global revolution. Every revolution up until now was a national revolution, where the revolutionaries sought to gain control of the capital city to run that country differently. This is a global values revolution that's saying, look, instead of having money values rule over the life cycle, we're going to have life, life values rule over the money cycle. If you ask that to people, which is sacred, life or commerce, they're not going to say commerce. They're going to say life. Commerce is just an activity. It's something we do. Life is what we're about. It's why we were put here. It's the meaning of our existence. Thank you so much, Kevin, for your time. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our viewers? I just want to encourage people to, you know, we're very tolerant people, but I think we should have no tolerance for cynicism. There's a lot of cynicism out there where people, oh, man, you're trying to save the world. Oh, we're doomed. No, no, that's not the right attitude. Glass half full not glass half empty. Cynicism is what passes for insight when courage is lacking. It's what passes for insight when courage is lacking. That's a fantastic quote. We need to step up and say we have the possibility here of changing the course of history in a turn that's never been seen before. Sustainability used to happen on the level of the tribe or small groups of people, but nine billion on a finite planet? Yeah, we got to get real creative. So we have an economic crisis and an environmental crisis and a crisis of social inequality, which calls for a business model that links social justice, environmental restoration, and financial sustainability, what's usually called profit, together. And that's what we're doing in this event, and that's why we're trying to take this event into a real estate model. Fantastic. Thanks so much for your time, Kevin. This is Amy Hale from the Seattle Green Festival 2009. We are the light, we are the future, and this world keeps turning around. Well, some of them are living upside down, forgetting to keep their feet on the ground or oh, they are lost but 